This month, Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel passed its one-year anniversary. The game launched on January 18th, 2022, and just a few months ago, back in November, it had reached 50 million downloads. Today, I've invited fellow content creators Farfa and MBT to join me in discussing the last year of Master Duel updates, events, cards, and more. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Welcome to discussing Master Duel one year later. We have a bunch of questions lined up, and I have two fantastic guests with me today. We have Farfa and MBT. Hello, how are you guys doing? Why Good doesn't anyone play Master Duties? Duel? Damn, you both went for a bit at the same time. That's rough. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how the entire video is going to go. We're just going to talk over each other. Go again, go again, go again. Go, go, go. <laughs> Why doesn't anyone play Master Duel? Good afternoon, Jank enthusiasts. So uh, in today's very sort of loose, casual video, we are just uh, talking about Master Duel, answering some questions about the game a year later. Um, the game was sort of soft released uh, January, I think, 19th. Uh, somewhere around there last year so it has been a year and obviously we are all content creators for Yu-Gi-Oh! so Master Duel um, is going to impact Yu-Gi-Oh! in some way so in today's video we're going to talk about some stuff. First off I want to mention that uh, when the first initial trailer went out for Master Duel one thing that caught a lot of people's attention was the visuals and how it looked and how it looked like it would feel to play um, it's been historically kind of difficult to put a card game into a digital sense we've seen a lot of attempts over the years how do you think uh, Master Duel feels. I think that Master Duel's like general feel is far and away its strongest point. Um, you know, uh, when you when you look at like uh, dev diaries for Hearthstone, uh, a lot of the stuff that Ben Brode did, Brode did on the design side was specifically ma made so uh, the card game was readable to people who did not understand what each of the individual cards do. You could tell when something epic and cool was happening, and. Uh, it was clippable like yeah it was just designed from the ground up to create funny twitch clips and master duel is exactly the same it is so readable even for people who have never read a Yu-Gi-Oh card in their life yeah uh, which is something that literally every other piece of Yu-Gi-Oh reporting in the history of time has been unable to do like trying to get people to watch YCS coverage is you know you might as well ask them to stick a knife in their eye it's just you know <laughs> It's incomprehensible, but Master Duel translates so well. Like, I, I think that if you were trying to pitch, like, why Master Duel is the greatest product ever, mm -hmm. the number one thing you'd say is, is it looks and it feels incredible. And that was one of the goals that they talked about in that trailer. They said they wanted it to be spectator friendly. Like, that was in the initial, like, Master Duel announcement. Um, Farfa, how about you? Yeah, I think visually and stuff, everything you said is spot on. Um, and mechanically to play, I think it feels quite strong as well. Mm -hmm. uh, having spent a large amount of time <laughs> on automatic uh, simulators and mm -hmm. such, uh, and you know the 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 other manual one, it's uh, night and day just how uh, much more flush and fluid it feels. And, yeah. And uh, if you'd really take advantage of the controls, like holding to toggle and holding off to toggle off and stuff like that, um, it does really um, feel great to use. And uh, it takes a bit, get, uh, bit of getting used to if you aren't like completely familiar with all the niche interactions of on resolution, I want to activate a quick effect and stuff like that, making sure you're toggling at the right time, toggling right. off to hide your disruptions. Your max creates this like, <laughs> yeah, it creates this like almost subset mini game when you're trying to like toggle off to hide your mm -hmm. uh, Nibiru and Maxi in the draw phase and stuff like that. But overall, I think, um, yeah, I just think for the average player experience, it's a super, super just a uh, fluid experience, you know? Yeah, and I think it borrowed a lot from, I know that both of you guys have played this game quite a lot as well. I think it borrowed a lot of the best aspects of Duel Links. Duel Links was a big step mm -hmm. forward for playability. And I think, it, you know, that sort of um, learned a lot from Hearthstone because that Duel Links obviously was a mobile game first. So it was really easy to make it touch screen um, incorporated and stuff like that. But I think that this really borrowed a lot of stuff from Duel Links in the best way possible. And they improved upon it even more and more, which was great to see. I was concerned because in Duel Links, uh, you are uh, you kind of held, your hand is held and you are told when the interesting moments of each game are mm. because the, the player character will be like, wow, that <laughs> card was nuts. And I was like, well, unless Yugi shows up, I don't know how we're going to figure out that Circular wins the game on its own. But <laughs> yeah, I they think really the, did. You know, they I think the, uh, the card artworks popping out when you summon like important monsters and stuff is very similar to like the legendary voice lines and animations in Hearthstone in the best way Put possible. Put your faith where, in the light. Right, yeah. where they're fast, they're flashy and they're exciting without like being so in your face where they take away from the gameplay. 
Okay, next and question. there's like weight oh. to cards with high attack, you know? Yeah. Like, wham, onto the field. Oh, it's great. I love Summoning it. those big monsters. Yeah, they're great. They're fun. Egyptian My guys. favorite part, just before uh, moving on, mm -hmm. I think uh, something they need to keep elaborating on is uh, the custom effects for each individual card. Oh. Of, like, for example, the Mirror Force has its own effect. Dark yeah. Hole. Oh, it's sick. The cylinder yeah, one think, is like, so good. So good. <laughs> yeah, they need to keep, like, incorporating, like, more meta-relevant ones so mm -hmm. that people can, like, really sort of understand, like, hey, this is a high-impact card because, you know, as cool as, like, the Mirror Force and the Cylinder ones are, <laughs> those are probably not going to be showing up in, like, Challenger Cup sort yeah, of... Yeah, probably uh, just Master Saga kind of thing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Triple tech flips that's, you that's off, you know. <laughs> the called by one kind of feels like it when they use it. I'm going to be honest. How has Master Duel changed your life as a content creator? You know, I kind of like freak out a little bit when I think about where I was a year ago because my life was very different. Master Duel really did change things quite a bit for me on YouTube, and I know it did for you guys as well. Um, but just tell me about that. What changed? Like, what do you think about now compared to a year ago, where you were then, and what Master Duel has uh, kind of helped with that? I think uh, this literally changes everything is one of my favorite <laughs> this content changes everything. likes to say. <laughs> yeah. It honestly did. It completely mm -hmm. did. Um, it's developed an entire niche sort of separate thing in and of itself. It's yeah. a, its own little franchise and stuff because, you know, it's Yu-Gi-Oh! But like TCG and Master Duel are vastly different from each other. Mm -hmm. uh, as a TCG content creator, it's like... I guess I basically transitioned over completely to Master Duel, and I don't think I've uploaded a TCG video in the last like whole year, except like <laughs> twice. Um, and it's crazy because it's been fine in terms of performance and stuff. And, yeah. And you know, it's it's just something different, but I think it's really good as well because of everything we just mentioned with the visuals and stuff like that. It's easier to watch and it's simpler to follow. And I think it's new player, new viewer, yeah. potential audience. Uh, friendlier. Well, and I think that you're you're totally right there. I mean, you guys obviously like are streaming all the time. And I think just when you are sitting there for like four or five, six hours, it is nice to look at something that does look really nice. You know, those first couple months where Master Duel was released, we were all streaming like 12 hours every day. It was crazy. Yeah. No, I, I guess I, I have kind of the opposite perspective insofar as like I was a TCG creator that didn't really transition away from TCG content. Mm -hmm. um, I tried a couple of times, but like the stuff that I make relative to the TCG just didn't translate super well over to Master Duel. So if yeah. you go to the channel, it's about half and half. You know, I've got like uh, stuff for new decks that are coming out in the TCG, and then I've got like stream stuff for Master Duel. But as far as streaming goes, I mean, Master Duel is I, just God's gift to streamers. Like, yeah. when I think about how sometimes I would have a random hour in a schedule and I'd be like, let's play a dueling book game. Like, <laughs> oh, one my game. Goodness. I couldn't I could never go back. It's it's a comp for for streaming. It's a combination of like people want to see it. It's very spectator friendly. Um, uh, plus, you can hammer out a lot of games in a short amount of time. Yeah. Um, so you don't just like have to sit there for 90 minutes waiting for a judge call or something. I mean, tr truly, I mean. It is, it is revolutionized the way that we stream Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, absolutely. And basically, I do miss some of that. Like, those were some of my best highlights. <laughs> you got some fun clips on Dueling Book, yeah. You did, yeah. yeah. You did. You know, to be fair. Uh, I don't know if it's, like, just as a side note, I don't know if it's, like, a case of the format right now. I'm just, like, j as a person, I'm just not into TCG at this current point in yeah. time. Yeah. I'm it's sure not for everyone. change over the next few months and stuff, but at least... I'm oh, just as happy. someone... As someone who knows all the cards that are coming out for the next few months, it ain't gonna change. <laughs> <laughs> we need a 20 you better, you better get settled in. That's yeah. what we're waiting for. What do you think Master Duel's done in regards to Yu-Gi-Oh's brand awareness compared to like other Yu-Gi-Oh video games? You know, Yu-Gi-Oh's released a lot of video games over the years, but what do you think has been different about Master Duel? I mean, we've kind of talked about a couple of things, but we are seeing like all sorts of people that maybe normally wouldn't have tried out Yu-Gi-Oh playing Yu-Gi-Oh on stream multiple times, sometimes even like for weeks. It's really cool to see. What do you think is different about Master Duel? How do you think this has affected Yu-Gi-Oh's brand and awareness just in general well the difference between master duel and every other Yu-Gi-Oh video game is that people played master duel um <laughs> no duel links was kind of the model in that yeah. it did have some appeal for people um like normies uh who would like play it on the bus or whatever um but every other Yu-Gi-Oh video game has been hampered by the problem that you are playing Yu-Gi-Oh in a video game it's tough and like 
it's an incredibly complex game. Yeah. Uh, it is, you know, it has over 10,000 moving pieces. You can't just jump into it, uh, you know. Um, but uh, Master Duel is so, like, um, spectator-focused that, yeah, I mean, we've got, like... <laughs> In, like Ludwig is playing I know. Master Duel. I mean, it's crazy. Like uh, Charlie is like in on Master Duel. He was mm -hmm. in a little on Duel Links, but it's like it's shocking. Yeah. And um, uh, I, I think we have really seen, especially over the last year, like this uh, almost renaissance of Yu-Gi-Oh's sort of impact on like the cultural hegemony, I guess. Yeah. Uh, if you remember like five years ago, like there was no Yu-Gi-Oh merch. Like there, you, it was just a game that sweaty nerds played. And now like you go to Hot Topic and you can get like the Pegasus Funko Pop or like a keychain <laughs> with like the Vrains characters on yeah. it. You can get the cereals, the candy, you know, they're making collaboration shoes with Adidas. Like it, it's, it's back as this like, obvious like nostalgia oriented product mm -hmm. but it also has this like next gen simulator that some of you know for better or for worse our cultural leaders in big ass twitch streamers love playing it's been fantastic i it's can talk it's a fun to normal game, people you know? about yugioh it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful it's cool. It's cool. yeah i mean i think the most important thing it's done is completely revolutionized accessibility to the game yeah and yeah i yes. you know i remember when i think specifically charlie was first getting into uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, he was trying a little bit of Duel Links or whatever, and mm -hmm. then I remember specifically I was trying to help him, like, play the TCG with me, and I was trying to get him on Edo, and he was like, is this like a virus? Because <laughs> like, that's, yes. that's how impossible it is to get any form of TCG gameplay yeah. online or on a yep. computer in a digital space, and, you know, in terms of video games and stuff, I mean, just as a general sign note, I would love to see some kind of Pokemon open world style Yu-Gi-Oh game like the old world championship games again one day you know I'm still hoping that we'll get a, an update to that but you know Master Duel is uh, probably the easiest thing that people can use to access the TCG in yeah. some capacity even though it's not obviously the same format and stuff it's the closest thing you'll get to like hey I want to play Yu-Gi-Oh now and the the marketing and the advertising has been good. It hasn't been like incredible, but for sure, there's definitely so many people who've picked it up again. And mm -hmm. so many people that I've talked to have just been like telling me about their experiences with it. And it's just crazy to think that this is just something that would not have happened without Master Duel. Like no yeah. one's going to be like coming up with Yu-Gi-Oh decks and <laughs> trying out the TCG physically. Uh, in retrospect to Master Duel. Like, Master Duel just opened that up and broadened the horizons of the potential audience, like, just so much. For sure. And I'm mean, i I'm sure both of you experienced this, um, but whenever I go to events, like, over the past year now that they've been going on, um, YCS is, like, all weekend, people are coming up to me saying, like, you know, I didn't play Yu-Gi-Oh! for, like, 10 years. Master Duel released. I somehow found, like, a lot of the big streamers, the big YouTubers, and now they're at a YCS. And that type of journey is exactly what I want to see. So, in Master Duel, if you want to play the main mode and one of the only modes for the first few months was the ranked mode. Um, what do you guys think about the ranked mode now? Because we've had it for a year. It's gone through a couple changes, but not a ton. Um, so what do you think about just the general sort of how ranking up works, how the ranked ladder goes, the best of one format? I think ranked is fine. It's pretty decent for the most part. And for the average player, it's mostly okay gets the job done and it does enough for a new player experience in around the sort of silver gold region which is probably where most new players will be spending their time um however what i will say is for anyone trying to push a little bit further than that and higher <laughs> it does i think bring a sort of a more frustrating experience because of the limitations of best of one and yeah as controversial as this is, I think Maxi is uh, huge. <laughs> yeah, still, even a issue. year later, people are definitely debating Maxi and Master Duel that has not gone away. Yeah, I, I think like it is such a pivotal, important card that it really does shift the game. And, um, you know, personally, I think the way to alleviate that is that if we just had more game modes, because currently the only way to access Master Duel really is through rank best of one singles, mm -hmm. right? And I think that if there was a different not changing the current version, which is, I guess, what they're aiming for, a quick little single 
uh, best of one thing that you can do on the bus, although, you know, that's arguable, I suppose. Uh, that's sort of the intention that they had for the average player. However, I think that if people want to push a little bit further, something like best of three is naturally going to alleviate the sort of variance issues that something like Maxi can cause and just the general variance of card games. Right. So I think that's something that's definitely missing. And that's not even touching upon potential things like, you know, Hearthstone Arena mode. Why can't we have a draft mode? Why can't we have a legacy format mode? Which is very possible. It's just still not there yet. And I think that's basically the major missing piece of the game right now is that there is not a lot of alternative things to do outside of regular ranked. So maybe not so much of an issue with the ranked mode itself and more so just that you want more options for the players. Yeah. It, get, it can get, anything can get stale after, you know, a, a year. A year, yeah. <laughs> I like the ranked mode. Yeah. I think it's fine. Uh, it, you know, it it's just Duel Links. It's, I think, exactly the same system from Duel Links. Um, it, you know, why mess with something that isn't broken? I, I understand people want uh, best of three. Um, <sighs> well, just to clarify, I wasn't suggesting to change it. I just... Didn't. I know, I understand, I understand. But, um... I, in general, I have no problem with, like, the main way to play the game being best of one. Just because, like, it's a lot of time, you know? Uh, I um, <clears throat> I think the ban list is, is kind of a problem. I wish they would ban according to best of one, right? Obviously, I would like Max Seagon. Like, <laughs> I know a lot of sickos. But also, there's, like, a ton of cards that aren't that much of a problem. But in best of one specifically can be, like... Really game mind. ending super threats yeah like i wish they would despite the fact that the deck is not very good like be pretty uh liberal with hits to like numeron yeah you know i'd like to see them uh you know they've done a good job of semiing all of them but honestly why not like ban teak boo goes in rivalry um all those cards that like okay you have to have a cosmic or you lose um and uh you know, hey, at least mystic mind yeah. was banned when they launched the game <laughs> That was good. Yeah, yeah. And there's also some, like, weird decisions made every ban list where, like, a random card will go to two and you have to be like, why? You know, what's that doing exactly? <laughs> what did Lao Lao um, do to them? <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, and I, um... Like but in general, I think that they... Right. Yeah. Yeah, in general, I think that they have done a better job with the ban list of late than they were yeah. early. Like, early, I think the first couple ban lists were, like, huge misses, and they took that to heart and changed accordingly. Well, even, uh, even that, that one-two punch ban list with, like, the... Where, like, it, yeah. it almost seemed like it was, like, two halves of a ban list. I don't know yeah. if that's... If they intended originally to release two ban lists right in a row, but that's, like, I think an example of them, like, taking player feedback when people were like, why the hell is Helky Fireback? not banned and then a month later they did ban it which was cool to see they were like our bad yeah um Whoops. i think nadir is absolutely right on the money though about like um uh, alternative formats uh, yeah it's nice that when you go to hearthstone you can play whatever ladder has become now or you can load into the true game which is of course battlegrounds um <laughs> yeah. i would like to see something similar for Yu-Gi-Oh, and we do have infrastructure for it you know um uh like draft one of the secret packs would be a really interesting mode i think yeah uh there's like putting legacy formats into this is as simple as flipping a switch uh, especially if you say you know sorry we're not playing the ones with priority because then we have to code stuff <laughs> um but you know um i think it all of just that a custom list that they need to introduce right i i don't know yeah i'm not a game well, designer and they have or to... coder but i feel like you just Make a they have to release um, unerotted versions of some cards as well, which is yeah, maybe suppose. confusing. I'm so, is, um, is it really that hard? I, I guess it probably is because there's like 10,000 cards and it's, you know, they don't want to keep track of like everyone making a thousand of them. But it is, I wish you could do like, what if every account could have like one custom ban list for side lobbies? Like that kind of thing would be cool. Like you can save mm -hmm. one custom balance at a time where you put the balance in like your friends, like on your friends list can use it to try to build decks, that kind of stuff. You know, I just think about that a lot when we're playing Saga and Roulette and stuff, just how nice it would be to have a feature. I, I guess I just don't understand why that's never been implemented into a Yu-Gi-Oh game, but I feel like with Master Rule specifically, it'd be really cool because they're showing that they want people to play these like older formats. And yeah, you can switch it to unlimited, but it'd be cool to have it like, you know, actually hard have older ban lists in it, or at least the option to put older ban lists into it. Yeah. And I do think we might get those, you know, eventually. Yeah. I think the popularity of like Time Wizard events in, at least in North America. Yeah. Has... Edison events, especially. We've got Konami. Well, the, like... the thing is, we know that we're getting it because 
remember way back on release, we still have a lot of data mined things that aren't in the game yet, right? It's like, remember we saw, like, we saw literally, because, you know, the game was initially up to plat one, and there was <laughs> data mined assets of Diamond, and we got that later into the lifespan of Master Duel, which... Yeah. Some yeah, way later. Now might not remember, but that that was a thing. The plat one was the cap, and then they increased <laughs> mm -hmm. it to diamond. And the, the, the assets <laughs> what a time. are there. Plat one, yeah. Plat one, yeah. And there and there's more assets for more ranks, by the way, yeah. past diamond. Um, right. And the most important one that, in reference to what we're talking about, is classic format. There's literally a, an asset that says classic Yu-Gi-Oh. Which, what does that entail? Like we don't know, but there is like an event planned of some sorts for that. Mm -hmm. I suppose. So, you know, oh, um, I don't know if the infrastructure is in there yet, but at least I suppose they're thinking the idea about it. Is, and, I think it thinking and I think it would be immensely popular. Yeah. I With bet. regards to uh, the the events, I guess we just kind of skipped over. Yeah. So that's that's like the next question. Just what do you guys think about events? Uh, I think they've been great. You know, obviously, uh, I don't like play them obsessively. I don't, you know, clean them out. Mm -hmm. um, but I do like that it's a there's a lot of like gem rewards. Um, yeah, a you know, lot. It's good for players who, uh, yeah, who want to get payouts. Uh, they took the criticisms of people playing like self TK to heart, and you know, for what it's worth, I mean, I very infrequently run into people trying to do that nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, I think that a lot of the uh, the events were a miss. Um, the synchro fest was a, like a snoozer, um, just because like the way card design works. A lot of these events are like, okay, today you're going to play you know who wins the die roll and gets the combo <laughs> off harder first yeah uh but there have been some good ones i think the original xyz event was really cool i think the nr format event was really cool uh i actually really like the current event i was gonna I say the, the current one a lot of people are really big fans of i wish that they had restricted it exclusively to solo mode archetypes because i know some people have found some stuff that like clearly wasn't intended in terms of um uh, what's legal but it's been nice to load in and like my opponent's on mutant and i'm on world <laughs> chalice and i'm like oh you know what yeah could happen? it's cool yeah i think you mentioned the most important thing there was that the first few events were kind of just bad because you essentially were going to try like a cool like synchro deck and then you would queue into like some massively true draco. yeah true draco was the biggest culprit and offender but that happened like way too much and mm -hmm. i think it was probably uh quite a deterrent for newer players at the time which is really sad to think a lot of people might have been playing master Duel on release or very early on in lifespan and then just haven't come back because of that because in all credit to konami they've done such an incredible job of, of taking on feedback yeah mm -hmm. um the most important thing i wanted to mention on that was the was the uh, loner decks were pretty terrible initially. They were kind oh, yeah. of atrocious. Those first you know, event, oh my gosh. They're one. like, yeah, it's like starter decks basically. <laughs> yeah, but now they're like almost fully fledged constructed decks. Yeah. Like I've yeah. been kind of tearing it up with the plunder one in this in this nice. uh, event and it's it works pretty decently. It's not completely optimized on how I would build it, but they're they're very playable. And I think that for people who don't have good decks to play on Master Duel, either because they don't farm out the dailies and stuff enough, or because of the fact that the gems and rewards in Master Duel dry up really quickly once they front load a lot of the rewards. And then after that, it's quite hard to build decks once you've exhausted the initial like resources. So having those um, loner decks uh, available for events like this has actually been massively helpful, I yeah. think. What do you think about the frequency and quality in terms of like the decisions of cards being added into Master Duel from the TCG and OCG? Um, now, I will say here that at the beginning, a lot slower, and while it has picked up, um, a lot of you guys probably already know, and I know that you two know, there are some cards that um, have been kind of skipped over that we're missing from sets that we have like 90% of, for example, so that's kind of like where I'm talking about the quality of cards getting decided on, but also it's been kind of interesting to see um, a few times here, Konami sort of uh, remake or sort of make these new packs using archetypes that weren't originally intended to go together. Um, I think of like the adventure Fluanderese pack, um, not necessarily two archetypes people are huge fans of, but uh, you know, I thought that was kind of interesting that Konami like took two decks from two different packs and then combined them into like sort of a themed selection pack. They're kind of uh, doing that. We've seen a number of archetypes over the past year combined with other archetypes that weren't originally released alongside them, but do kind of thematically make sense to be in the same set at least. At release, I think that uh, Master Duel was what, like a year behind current? Yeah. And 
we are now six months behind current. So we're moving, we're schmoving, uh, but I think I speak for everyone when I say we got to hurry that up. Um, it, it is, it's been at least a little laughable uh, over the last like six months having to, when I'm make, doing a day of making TCG content, like having to take a couple minutes to be like, okay, Sprite's crazy, tears crazy, you know, <laughs> and then like you go back to Master Duel, you're like, oh, oh right, uh, um, the best deck is Sword Soul, you know. Um, it is, it, it's also part of kind of a problem that I think we have in the TCG now because our release schedule is so staggered from the OCG mm. is uh, it kind of defeats the mystery of the thing. Uh, when you get the cards, you know what's going to be good. You know, there aren't too many surprises. Yeah. It's like, okay, this is the deck that had a, you know, three month run in the TCG. It's going to be crazy. This is the deck that's currently tearing up tier zero. You know, it's nuts. Um, I do like uh, the staggered releases insofar as they are giving decks that were crept by other cards in the same pack uh, the potential to shine. Like right oh, yeah. now, the best deck is arguably Mathmech. Um, which would not have happened if it was released at the same time as Sprite and Tier Lament. And when those do release, you can all wave goodbye to Circular. Um, but at the same time, I can't help but feel that the sluggishness of the thing is is really kind of um, uh, preventing the hype that I would like to see with regard to people trying out new archetypes and strategies. And basically, it's just a time gate by which they wait for the deck that they are already playing in the TCG to show up. It's been a year. They've added a lot of new features. They've added new cosmetics and stuff like that. New fields, new cards, all sorts of stuff, events, new modes, I guess. What do you want to see in 2023, though? You know, this is an entire year. If Master Duel gets the same amount of updates, or hopefully even more updates than it did in 2022, what are some new features, some new things you'd like to see this year that you think are, like, realistic expectations, but things that, you know, it doesn't have at the moment? Kind of saw a lot of the things we've already touched upon. Um, major ones, I think, is alternative game modes. Alternative formats, at least, I think, is the easiest thing to implement. Yeah. Uh, a little bit harder to implement, but still within the realm of realism, I think would be some sort of draft mode. I'd like to, I'd love to see more replay, replayability in solo mode. Mm. Um, I'd love some sort of alternative uh, ranked um, formats and stuff. Uh, and I'm hoping for major events, um, eSport-esque events almost um, at the World Championship, assuming we will have one this year. And I think those are probably my biggest on the wish list. And I suppose, of course, more realistic sort of understandings, at least in terms of like card release schedule and that sort of uh, the main point of like, where are we at and how yeah. this parallels with TCG slash OCG. But overall, I think for me, it's definitely the alternative formats, the ability to, it's, maybe it's just like a streamer bias thing, but being able to just sit and play a more chill format that doesn't require as much or at least a different skill set to the attentiveness that is required to play yeah. modern Yu-Gi-Oh. I think being able to just set a sign gun and a back row and pass and just kind of vibe would be incredibly fun. Yeah, no, that's those are good points. Those are good points. What about you, MBT? All of that, uh, but also uh, you should be able to play progression series in client. <laughs> uh, we need a Luke Von Karma mate that you can only use while you're watching dual live replays. Uh, no, I mean, I, I think I think the number one one for me is is limited play. Um, I really would like to see something like Battle Pack Draft. You know? I wish. Yeah, I mean, um, it's in uh, Legacy of the Duelists. They put Battle, well, I, I mean, know. not Battle Pack 3, but it was Battle Pack 1 and Battle Pack 2 in that <laughs> game. Really drafted the game. Not the good one. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, I mean, and that was cool. That'd be nice to see, but yeah. Yeah, that was nice. I'd like to see that. Um, I, I think, you know, i memeing about progression series, but I think it really has shown to uh, Konami that there is a an appetite for limited play among yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh players. And, you know, uh, Saga, of course, is another great example of that. And um, I'd, I'd love to see something uh, to that regard. Um, I think Farfa said this, but number one for sure is alt formats. Just put in Edison and Goat. It's the easiest thing ever. I will literally never play ladder again. <laughs> uh, and um, I'm almost in the same boat, you know. Yeah, and uh, and it would like to see it was built uh, at release as this will be how Yu-Gi-Oh becomes an esport. Mm -hmm. And while I really do like the stuff that they're doing in the EU, the Challenger uh, Cup and everything, uh, I would like to see not only similar events come to North America and LATAM and stuff, uh, but also um, a road to Worlds. You know, it's nice that you can get your invite from Duel Links and you know 
there's nothing comparable right now. Yeah, I wonder if you're like still trying to even figure out like what that looks like, but hopefully that, I mean, that has to be, well, I mean, has to be, but that should be implemented. I, I hope to see that. I'm purchasing an Xbox. I'm going to make it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Turning I'll cross play in Swiss. <laughs> right, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll say for myself, you know, you guys kind of have said, we've talked about a lot of things. Um, drafting though, is really one thing, you know, it was in legacy of the duelist. I know it'd be hard to implement, but even something with like drafting in just like the master packs or God forbid, I say the legacy packs, packs or the secret packs, you know, something where you could like open a pack and then like pick a, a card from that pack and add it to your collection and keep it. That would be awesome. I'm a big fan of arena in Hearthstone. I play Arena a lot. I play Battlegrounds a lot um, on my off time when I do have some free time to play Hearthstone um, occasionally. And I, I just think that having a drafting mode would be really exciting. I know Yu-Gi-Oh! players in general um, aren't necessarily always the most open to drafting. A lot of people don't really understand it because Yu-Gi-Oh! isn't really about that as much as like Pokemon and other games like Magic and stuff. But I really do think that drafting is a fun thing. Arena's cool. It'd be cool to keep your cards after you drafted them. Other than that though, I'm just hoping for more cosmetics cosmetics and events, kind of just the things that you guys have said, but hopefully just more new things. I want to see Master Duel continue to receive support um, this year. I don't want it to just like <laughs> teeter off or whatever and they just stop Link giving Link out. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I want to just see continued support like they've done with Duel Links um, over the years. You know, if Master Duel in five, six years is getting as much support as Duel Links is five, six years in, I think we're going to be in a pretty good spot as Yu-Gi-Oh players. Uh, oh, and you can give something to the normies too, like a solo mode where like Yu-Gi congratulates you on how well you normal summoned <laughs> Blue Eyes White Dragon, you know? Like why, why are solo modes just like you know, slideshows of AI translated text. Get get Dan Green on there. Get him to say, wow, that was a great play. Yeah, I would love for him to shout out in his epic voice, uh, I summon the dark spillion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Man, now that's a throwback. Anyway. Oh, I forgot about dark spillion. That's crazy. <laughs> Before we devolve into chaos, thank you two for joining me. Make sure to check out these guys' channels. I mean, I'm sure you guys, I mean, you see them every week. Like, they're on Saga and Roulette. But make sure to check them yeah, out if you, you haven't already. Have you already. channels before? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, who are these people? I don't know. They, uh, let us know in the comment section below what you think about Master Duel one year later, especially with any of the things that we've talked about throughout today's discussion video. Anyway, though, we'll see you later. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.